Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Heartiest welcome to you. Each one of you, please feel as a personal welcome to each one of you. All the families gathered together to hear this Sunday Mass. The sisters in your convents, congregations, Hearty welcome, dear sisters, to the families all together, to each family. So lovely to have you joining me and as we pray to God. Friends all over, priests, religious brothers, and the rest. We begin this Eucharistic sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence. Today is the fourth Sunday in Easter, and we are progressing learning more and more about our Lord, reflecting on the resurrection. Today, the first Sunday, is also the feast that two parishes, at least in our archdiocese, are celebrating their feast days. One is St. Joseph the Worker. I think St. Joseph who had celebrated it already on the first, St. Joseph the Worker in Bandra East, and uh, Our Lady of Health in Vasova. Happy feast to the parishioners, parish priest, and uh, God bless each one of you. Remember you very specially uh, during this Mass. Every Eucharist is a thanksgiving. We have every morning on the, during the weekday praying for different intentions. And I was thinking that uh, we must thank the Lord also for so many blessings. I want you to join me in thanking the Lord and this Eucharist for so many who have been healed in our own country, India, our city, Mumbai, all over the world. Thank God for them. We pray to God to bless the efforts of all, all the medical personnel to bring back to the families, to society, those who are now being treated. So this mass, mass of thanksgiving. Now we put ourselves in God's presence and ask his forgiveness for our sins. And humbly we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May you forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we praise you for all the great things we've had. And so we say, glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, 
lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Kindly sit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd with a loud voice. The whole house of Israel can be certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Hearing this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, What must we do, brothers? You must repent, Peter answered, and every one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise that was made is for you and for your children and for all those who are far away, for all those whom the Lord our God will call to himself. He spoke to them for a long time using many arguments and he urged them, save yourselves from this perverse generation. They were convinced by his arguments and they accepted what he said and were baptized. That very day, about 3,000 were added to their number. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Kindly repeat, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. Our response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, and with these you give me comfort. Our response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Our response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Our response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. The merit in the sight of God is in bearing punishment patiently when you are punished after doing your duty. This in fact is what you were called to do because Christ suffered for you and left an example for you to follow the way he took. He had not done anything wrong and there had been no perjury in his mouth. He was insulted and did not retaliate with insults. When he was tortured, he made no threats, but he put his trust in the righteous judge. He was bearing our faults in his own body on the cross, so that we might die to our faults and live for holiness. Through his wounds, you have been healed. You had gone astray like sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us stand now as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. 
I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and my own know me. Together. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not heed them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that they may have life and have it in abundance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise Lord, to you Jesus Lord Jesus Christ. My dearest sisters and brothers, families, religious sisters, and friends all over. We've had a very, very beautiful uh, readings, three readings, so rich with meaning, rich in content, and so much to tell us. And it ends with uh, John 10.10. 10. I have come that they may have life and have life in abundance. You know, some, I remember that some years back, almost 15, 20 years back, uh, I was on the board, the governing board of uh, Radio Veritas, that's a radio station in the Philippines broadcasting to that whole area, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, uh, China, Indonesia. That, and uh, I, we had our meetings first at uh, Manila, and then we would go to the transmission site every year, five, six, seven years or so that I was on the board. And uh, I remember one of the memorable things on that uh, long journey, it was about three hours journey, uh, was they went we used to pass through little towns for three hours so, and then lots of vacant spaces and then again another town. There was one shop which had the name of the shop was John 1010. And uh, I remember every time I passed up and down, uh, I, I would say John 1010. Everybody else had other fancy names, but this had John 1010. Uh, my knowledge of scripture is not that good. So I went back and I, I was very, very curious. Why did they put John 10.10? 10? And I was so thrilled that this person had put uh, this line. John, Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have life in abundance. Whether this was really meaning that over here, if you uh, come to my shop, you'll have life in abundance. Or really it was a devotion to Jesus, I don't know. 
but it struck me that this is a such a powerful sentence in the gospel i've come that they have may have life and have life in abundance we've been uh, meeting jesus these days every day we are meeting jesus every day we are talking to jesus every day we are listening to jesus in the gospel uh, in the readings uh, when we receive him uh, we have been talking but and then now he gives us really tells us why is i have come that you may have life i have come to give you life life in abundance and it's i think all through the year as we receive the gospel and hear the gospel uh, we are receiving life more and more spiritual life but also life of ethics to live as to live eternally but also to live on earth and uh, we'll reflect on this uh, that so much to reflect about this the whole gospel passage we we were last week talking about john 6 where we spoke of the eucharist and we have gone to john 10 chapter 10 of john but now john, jesus speaks of the shepherd and the line immediately after this gospel is i am the good shepherd that's really the theme of today's reading that he is the good shepherd we call it as a matter of fact it's called liturgically the good shepherd sunday because to the gospel is about the shepherd and also it's a day for praying for vocations to for priests to be good shepherds now the the example of shepherd might not be uh, uh, very much meaningful to most of us who are participating in the eucharist this morning because uh, shepherd is not uh, we don't see shepherds much in my own the archdiocese of bombay mumbai uh, now there is there are uh, there's industry in the time that time there was not much of industry there was ag- agriculture where they were sowing but there were also a third type of employment pastors pastoral people who take care of animals sheep goats cows etc and so this was really a full time job there were shepherds who were good shepherds who were not so good who really were not concerned they concerned only about the uh, payment they would receive from their employer but jesus calls himself a good shepherd now for those who've done research in that time the sheep folds very often were just open air there was no covering on top a little fencing and very often generally it was a no, small narrow door and jesus says i am the door i am the gate so he's the and the shepherd that time would very often sleep at the door and that would protect the sheep protect the sheep the sheep could not go out at night and wolves and thieves could not come in at night because he was sleeping there to guard them that was really the idea that i i'm the door and he, they would sleep there now the shepherds had a very good relationship with the sheep uh, they tell us in those other writings tell us that uh, the shepherds the sheep would recognize the voice of the shepherd shepherd would call out and the sheep would immediately respond they could be all mixed up of different uh, under peop- sheep from different shepherds and then one shepherd would go over there and call out and the sheep recognizing his voice would follow him and then the other shepherd would go and call out and the sheep rec- and uh, they knew instantly that this is their master and they knew that they had nothing to fear there was a beautiful psalm the lord is my shepherd there is nothing i shall want that was the responsorial psalm that we said this morning the whole theme is about the shepherd so jesus is our shepherd the qualities of a good shepherd were that he had to be somebody who patiently loved his love he was patient loving his sheep when they run away or go and bring them back he was fearlessly courageous courageous fright against wolves thieves robbers protect them he was a courageous man and also he was really eternally vigilant always vigilant to see if there any danger anywhere and that i think is what jesus is for us he wants in the gospel he continues shows us how to live our lives he's vigilant 
The church is vigilant. Jesus is vigilant, looking at us, fearlessly courageous, but above all, patiently loving us even when we stray. It's important that the sheep build up a relationship with the shepherd. I've been constantly saying that in the reflections on the Gospels during the week. And again, I want to repeat it over here, sisters and brothers, that Christianity and Catholicism is not a set of rules, a set of rituals. It's acceptance of a person, a person whom we relate to, a person whom we love, a person who, to whom uh, we belong and he belongs to us and we trust him so much our good shepherd. Later on, as this passage goes on, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, compare, like separating him from the evil shepherd. So we entrust ourselves to Jesus more. Thank him for being our shepherd. These days, uh, I know all of us are a little anxious, what will happen tomorrow, how things will be. Uh, uh, he's our good shepherd. What I, what we entrust him. We put ourselves in his hands. We know he's there for us. He will take care of us. Have faith. Have confidence. Have love for him. Believe in him. Trust in him. The sheep, hearing his voice, would follow the shepherd, uh, would not uh, think twice. If the shepherd's voice they heard, they would follow wherever uh, the shepherd went, following, hearing only his voice. If the shepherd slept, they would sleep there. They would rest there. As the responsorial psalm said, I have nothing to fear because the shepherd will take me to waters to drink, will take me to green grass to pasture, a food drink, will take care of me. I have nothing to fear because the shepherd is with me. Today is also the day for vocations. Pope Francis has been this uh, image of a shepherd, a sheep, is often used for our priests. As a matter of fact, uh, here we call them parish priests. Many countries they call them pastors. A pastor means shepherd. Shepherd in English, sheep, somebody who takes care of sheep. Pastors comes from the Latin word, pastores. A pastor, somebody who takes care of the sheep. Now, this is a constant imagery, and therefore the message is that priests should be good shepherds. Exactly the same uh, qualities. Constantly vigilant, fearlessly courageous, and patiently loving the people. It's a great challenge to us priests. I want you today, brothers and sisters, to pray for your priests in your parishes who help you who do so much for us. None of us is perfect. There are shortcomings. There are good qualities. Uh, I was in touch with Italy, and over a hundred priests have died in Italy caring for the coronavirus patients. Over a hundred priests have died. They have fearlessly went. Uh, it was a time when People did not know it was so dangerous, so infectious, so contagious, and they went uh, without much of protection to the hospitals, to the patients, ministering to them. Now, we know so uh, over 100 died. Many doctors died, you know that. Many nurses died, but the doctors generally had protective equipment, the priests not so many. So we therefore pray for our priests. Also, I want you to pray today for vocations. We need good priests. We need more priests in the Archdiocese of Bombay, in India, and the world over. The harvest is great, the laborers are few, but pray to the Father that the laborers become. So we pray also for vocations. Sisters and brothers, let us love the Good Shepherd. Let us thank the Good Shepherd. Let us pray that the Good Shepherd sends us his other shepherds who will care for us. Let us pray that we ourselves will be instruments helping all our shepherds, our priests, our sisters, our lay ministers to help us being to be good disciples of Jesus. God bless each one of you.
We've heard three beautiful readings. The second one from uh, St. Peter's first letter telling all of us, repent and believe in the gospel. The first one, again, about Peter's sermon. You've heard all this, now repent. And so we give our response to God from our hearts saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us place our needs before God our Father, rejoicing because Christ has triumphed over death and entered into glory. Our response is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. All together. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Pope Francis, Cardinal Oswald Gracious, bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, that they may continue to lead the church in witnessing to the joyful truth of the resurrection in these moments of challenge. For this we pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all doctors, nurses, and all healthcare workers, that as they risk their lives in selfless service of the sick, the Lord may protect and bless them and their families and give them strength to carry on bravely. We pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For governments around the world that all work unitedly and that they plan initiatives to effectively combat the spread of this coronavirus pandemic. For this we pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those engaged in relief work, that they are sustained with bodily strength and calmness of mind as they assist those in need. For this we pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, especially the coronavirus victims all over the world, that God give them eternal rest and comfort their families. For this we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, your beloved Son has risen from the dead, as he promised us. In peace and joy, we present our prayers to you, to the same Lord who lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, 
fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins. Cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and that of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Make the spread through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But during this season, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended to the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the auxiliary bishops, the order of bishops, and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Formed by divine teaching, and at the Savior's command, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins by the faith of your church and graciously grant the peace and unity in accordance with your will 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer you the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd. Be pleased to, to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom. Make you heirs of an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.
Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you. And have a, my dear people, have a lovely Sunday. Uh, I'll see you this evening again as we meet. I want to say once again, uh, happy feast to the, to the parishes. And I, today is also the feast of the Holy Cross. Uh, it's not liturgically anymore in the calendar, but many places celebrate May 3rd for the Holy Cross. Happy feast to you in your homes, in your villages. I know there are crosses are, and you have, used to have a little rosary uh, before the cross. Have it at home. God bless you once again and keep well, keep safe. We'll meet you this evening. God bless. Have a lovely Sunday. God. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.